All right. So the first question, which is question four, it is a proof. So we have the square root of 12 minus. So I'll write here left hand side because the left hand side can easily be simplified until you get the right hand side. So I'll write left hand side equal to the square root of 12 minus the square root of 75 all over 3 to the power of 3 over 2. Now, as you can see, the denominator can, cannot easily be simplified. So it is better to simplify the numerator first. And then from there you can see uh, how you can move on. But first, simplify the numerator. So this, this 12, I can write it as a product of a perfect square and a prime number. So it will be the square root of 4 by 3. And six, uh, 75, I can write that as the square root of 25 by 3. This is all over 3 to the power of, that is 3 to the power of 3 over 2. Alright? Then, the square root of 4 times 3 becomes 2 square root of 3 minus the square root of 25 times 3 becomes 5 times square root of 3. And that's all over 3 to the power of 3 over 2. Okay? Then, as I told you yesterday, since we have square root of 3 here and square root of 3 there, you treat them like your x and y in algebra. So it means that we'll say 2 minus 5, that will give us negative 3. Okay? So I'll end up getting negative 3 times the square root of 3. That's all over 3 times 3 over 2. Alright? I'm not done. Since I've got a square root sign in the numerator, and I've, I, I, I've got a rational exponent in the base, I would suggest that convert, convert the square root to a rational base so that it becomes minus 3 times 3 to the power of a half, all over 3 to the power of 3 over 2. So you need to also know how to convert a square root to, a, to an exponential term, okay, and vice versa. Once you do this, you need to know that there is a common base here. There is a common base there. For now, forget about that minus 3 because it's, it's negative, okay? So let's leave the minus 3. Let's concentrate on 3 to the power of a half and 3 to the power of 3, uh, 3 over 2. So we can use, we can use here, we can use the second law of exponents. We are dividing bases that are the same, therefore we can add, or sorry, we can subtract their exponents. So my next step would be to write negative 3 times 3 to the power of a half minus 3 over 2. If I do that, I'll end up getting minus 3 times 3 to the power of minus 1. Because a half minus 3 over 2 will give you negative 1. Then you use definition number 3. Yet, you have to use definition number 3, which is x to the power of minus n is equal to 1 over x to the power of n. Use that definition. So if I use that definition, I will end up having equal to minus 3 over 3, which gives me negative 1. So that's equal to the right answer. All right. Any question? Is there anyone who has got a question, please?
Can you respond? I need at least one person to respond so that I can move on to the other questions. Okay, thank you. So let's carry on. Right, let's move on to the other questions. So I'm going to start with E first. Okay? Now with E, my suggestion for that would be to do it this way. Is 3 divided by the cube root of 9. Okay? It's 3 divided by the cube root of 9. It's not square root of 9. So you can write as 3 divided by the cube root of 9. You multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the cube root of 9. Like that. The reason why we do that is to eliminate the square root in the denominator. Always remember that this part here, this is equal to 1. Okay? Square, sorry, the cube root of 9 divided by the cube, by the cube root of 9, the answer is a 1. So it is a mathematical technique that we use to rationalize the denominator. Okay? So if I carry on here, 3 times the cube root of, of 9 will give me 3 cube root of 9 over. Then if you multiply now the cube root of 9 times the cube root of 9, that should give you a 9. Okay? Remember this is a cube, it's a 3. Alright? Are you following that? Then, we have a common factor here, which is a 3. So 3 to 3, 1 into that, that's, that's a 3. So the final answer, you can write it as the cube root of 9 divided by 3. I have rationalized it, which means I have removed the square root in the denominator. The denominator is now an integer. All right? Are you following? Okay, then let's move on to C. Now, with regard to C, all right, we have this denominator has got a plus there, which means we have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, as I was saying yesterday. So that becomes square root of 2 over 4 plus square root of 2 times 4 minus square root of 2 over 4 minus square root of 2. Remember what I said yesterday? If there is a plus here, we put a minus there and a minus there. Okay, then use your knowledge of algebra. So we will end up having square root of 2 times 4 minus square root of 2 all over 4 plus square root of 2 times 4 minus square root of 2. Then in the numerator, square root of 2 times 4 will give me 4 square root of 2. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 will give me a 2. All over. Okay? 4 times 4 will give me 16. 4 times minus square root of 2 will give me minus 4 square root of 2. Square root of 2 times positive 4 will give me positive 4 square root of 2. Right? Then square root of 2 times negative square root of 2 will give me a 2. Right? Then you need to be aware that that minus square root of 2 and that minus square root of 2 and that positive 4 square root of 2. That is, the, the minus 4 square root of 2 and the positive 4 square root of 2 are going to cancel out. So, we will end up having 
we'll end up having our next step as 4 square root of 2 minus 2 all over 16 minus 2 will give us a 14. But the, numer the numerator can be factorized. So if we factorize it, we'll get 2 times 2 square root of 2 minus 1 over 14. Okay? And the final answer, the final answer which I'm going to write here, is going to become, you see this 2 and, and that one, the very common factor which is the 7. So the final answer will be 2 square root of 2 minus 1 all over 7. That's the final answer. This one here, that will be the final answer. It's simplified. Okay. All right. So I think uh, uh, is there anybody who has got any question? Okay, Chandu, which part you don't understand? And which question? Sir, it was number one, but I think I understand it now. Okay. All right, then, so we'll 